bottom. Lane to the right. Sorry, Link, I didn't hear you affirm your attendance there. Present. Thank you. DJ Statham. Sylvia Alvarez. Present. Freddie Sidbury. Here. Andrew Ditlipson. Present. Ramon Martinez. Anadina Cardenas. Here. Gloria Collins. Here. Thank you. You have a quorum. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the orders of the day? I so move. move. Second. Thank you. Can uh, we get the roll call? I'm sorry, a vote. Lenka? Yes. DJ? Sylvia? Yes. Eddie? Yes. Andrew? Aye. Ramon? And Nadina? Yes. Gloria? Yes. Thank you. That motion passes. Thank you. Item two, public record. There is no public record, so we'll move on to item three, the consent calendar. We have um, minutes of our September 18th public hearing to approve. Uh, is there any member of the public who would like to address the consent calendar? Blair Be hmm, excuse me, Blair Beekman. Hi, uh, Blair Beekman here. Um, thank you. Uh, just to quickly offer, I hope uh, there can be consideration as the um, uh, city charter process just approved to move forward the mayor's issues um, uh, or the mayor election issues uh, to, to vote for a mayor in, in presidential election years. Um, I wanted to offer just a simple reminder that uh, it's important to um, consider it's not just moving the election year, but it's the years after the election. There's going to be a lot of money involved in the future of these elections in presidential years. We have to be considering how to better uh, involve people who it's difficult uh, to, to, for, to have the money to, to run for uh, office. And, the, you know, we have to consider how to open up those practices better. The Charter Commission has made some good attempts and just to remind of the whole purpose of our election process and redistricting ideas uh, to make the process more and more accessible to more and more people to run for office should be an important goal for ourselves. Uh, good luck in those efforts, what we can be working towards in the next decade. Thank you. Back to the chair. Thank you. Um, would any of the commissioners like to pull this item for discussion? I see no hand. Um, can the clerk please call the roll? Jonathan? Lenka? Yes. DJ? Sylvia? Yes. <clears throat> Eddie? Oop, Freddie, I didn't catch your vote there. Would you like to vote to approve the consent calendar? I think you're muted. Yes. Thank you. Andrew? Yes. Ramon? And Adina? Yes. Gloria? Yes. Thank you. That motion passes. Thank you. Next on to item four, reports and information. Um, this is the second public hearing to discuss the draft district maps. Um, and I first would like to welcome Dee Baragan, who um, will be representing uh, District 3, or she will be appointed uh, shortly to, uh, to represent District 3. Um, so welcome, um, we're happy to have you. Um, 
some information. Uh, we will continue to have weekly meetings through November 4th, 2021, and our next meeting will be next Thursday, October 21st. Um, although we don't have an agenda item today for taking community of, of interest testimony, we will still be accepting community of interest testimony and members of the public who wish to provide uh, communities of interest testimony can do so during the public comment section of this meeting or any future meeting. Additionally, uh, members of the public can submit written testimony uh, as well as submit draft maps. Um, and you can find uh, additional information um, regarding community of interest testimony and map submittals at the San Jose Redistricting Commission page on the City of San Jose's website. Um, I also want to acknowledge that we've received public comment on several of the draft maps and we have also received more uh, submittals of maps from, from the members of the public. Um, so I do want to acknowledge the public participation and the increase in engagement since the draft maps um, were, were first posted. Um, and I just wanted to provide a little bit more background for, especially for those members of the public who may be joining us for the first time and haven't um, had the benefit of the context that we've um, been receiving these past couple of weeks. On September 30th, we received a presentation from redistricting partners on the 2020 census data, and the presentation showed the population changes within each of the districts in San Jose. And given, um, given the population changes, this commission will need to make changes to the current um, district lines. Um, and for members wishing, uh, members of the public wishing more information on um, those population changes and seeing where the deviations were, um, I would invite you to view the presentation on the YouTube page for um, sep our September 30th meeting. And I believe the actual PowerPoint presentation um, by redistricting partners was also attached to the agenda item for the September 30th meeting. Now, during today's discussion on the draft maps, I would like to make a couple of recommendations to the commission on how we move forward today. Um, like I said, this is our second meeting um, focusing on the drawing of the boundary lines to the district maps. And while the draft maps are being initially drawn with um, the help of our consultant redistricting partners, um, we as the commission um, have the ability to drive the map drawing and making uh, boundary line changes. And so um, I really would like to see more um, input involvement from the commission and giving direction to redistricting partners on what um, cut changes we'd like to see and other drafts uh, we'd like to see based on um, guidelines we need to follow based on public input that we've received and community of interest testimony. Um, so I, I have a couple of recommendations for today. I think it would be great if we could first identify perhaps a starting point map and build off of that to make the changes. Um, second, I think a discussion on guidelines uh, on how we will make changes moving forward would be helpful. Um, I think it's important to remember the city charter's guidelines, um, which state that um, in any redistricting, the council must make districts as nearly equal in population as may be practicable, and then may, in establishing the boundaries of the districts, give consideration to natural boundaries, street lines, or city boundaries, geography, co cohesiveness, and communities of interest within each district. So we need to weigh a lot of different factors and um, unfortunately we won't be able to please everybody. And so um, I think it's important to keep in mind in this session and future sessions what, what it is that we are going to give weight to and to try to articulate and understand uh, what the trade-offs are of certain decisions that we make. Um, 
I personally would like to see uh, a map that minimizes disruption to the current map and to maintain the continuity to the extent that's possible based on um, the, the current lines. Um, uh, so I just wanted to um, put, just throw some ideas that I've been thinking about and, and, and trying to see how we can organize ourselves for moving forward. So I look forward to a more uh, detailed discussion with you all um, shortly. Um, moving on, uh, does the clerk have a report for the commission today? Um, you kind of covered the things that I wanted to talk about, um, that Brogan is on the council agenda for next Tuesday. She, she is present so she can hear the testimony. Um, she'll be able to um, make comments, but she will be unable to make motions or vote. Um, but I knew it was important to get her into a meeting as soon as possible so she would um, hear all the testimony. Great, thank you. Um, next, uh, public comment on the reports. Um, would any members of the public like to address the report section? I see no hands. Okay, great. Um, next item, item five, public hearing. Uh, so tonight we are holding a public hearing on the draft maps that have been drawn up based on the new census data um, and as well as uh, our suggestions to redistricting partners last week to, um, to try to show us maps based on the changes uh, in population based on the census data. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to redistricting partners um, to present on the new draft maps. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Um, let me share my screen. So thank you for having me again. Um, um, I just wanted to go through the, the timeline. So um, we're talking about draft maps. Um, we're in October and um, the final passage deadline for city council passage is January 11th. Um, some of the themes we've heard um, throughout is to keep the Penitentia neighborhood in district four, that Delmas and downtown West, Delmas Park, excuse me, and downtown West should be in the same district to keep Filipino American, the Filipino American community together, um, to keep downtown San Jose together, and then to keep Berryessa together. And one of the things I think that came forward a lot in um, last week's meeting was the linkage between Berryessa and Penitencia, to keep those all both into District 4. Um, and then just to um, kind of rebalance. Um, and remind us what, what the current district lines are. These are the current 2011 lines. Um, I think as the chair already said that um, due to the unequal um, growth patterns in the city of San Jose, um, you have um, in areas that have grown much faster than, um, than the rest of the districts, the rest of the city, including the um, districts three and four are overpopulated mm -hmm. Um, with District 3 being 6.5% overpopulation and District 4 being 17.1% overpopulated. Um, and then Districts 9 and 10 being the ones that with the slowest growth and the most underpopulated. Um, and I just want to remind you as well as that all of these plans um, that, that, are, that are coming forward um, focus on the criteria that we've discussed in each of our meetings. Um, being equally populated, but we have that ability to go to 10% deviation between the smallest and the largest populated district, um, if you choose, that all districts need to be contiguous, they need, there's no hopping or jumping, no islands within districts, um, that we listen to the community of interest testimony that's been submitted, um, and that we seek to um, use or create compact districts. Um, and I think uh, as the chair already stated, and I just want to raise it um, again, is 
this is your these are your maps um i'm i'm trying to facilitate um the drawing process so as we go through each um, of these new plans um it would be great for um, you to focus in and tell me specific neighborhoods that you want linked together in districts and specific neighborhoods that you think should be separated and um, in separate districts because of their their communities of interest do not align. Um, all the all the these um, the draft plans that we'll be bringing forward to you um, will have an overview map of the, the total construction of um, the city council lines, a data page um, that shows total population and deviation, and then the citizen voting age population of all the different districts and then individual district plans with all the data as well. So from our discussion last week, um, it seemed that the, the consensus was that plans A and B uh, were non-starters. So I've, those have been thrown or those have been removed and um, a revision to plan C has, um, has occurred. And so we now have plan C2. Um, this, um, this plan, seeks to unite the Berryessa neighborhood and the Penitencia neighborhood into District 4 to make sure to include Delmas Park with downtown and to unify Willow Glen and Palm Haven together um, in a district. It's all, also some, there's some other um, like Willow Glen West and try to unify all of those neighborhoods in one. Um, to do this, um, we had to break up the uh, majority minority seats that were in the, um, the prior plans so this does not have three majority minority API seats or one majority Latino seat. Um, that's the trade-off for unif some of these movements, but also with the direct call from the commission um, to not draw them. So this is um, plan C2. You can, the, the neighborhoods are shaded. Um, it's a little bit complicated. Um, I think ideally what we would do is you can go into the individual districts um, as you're interested um, in looking at changes. Um, but I think the biggest thing again is unifying Berryessa and Penitencia into four, um, and unifying the Willow Glen and um, Palm Haven um, neighborhoods into nine and um, really looking back at the um, current district lines, which are, are, are shown here, um, to derive this new C2. Now you can see that there are changes um, that have to be made to, to do um, uh, population equality. You can see that District 4, um, a large chunk had to come out um, and move into District 3 to balance populations. Um, again, and in District 6 as well, needed to, um, you can see it grew and went east. Um, and but that districts one, nine, ten, and two are very, very similar um, to uh, the current lines. I think one of the issues that we have um, with with the current lines is that the plans are not contiguous. The districts are not contiguous, and that's a no-no in redistricting. It's illegal. Um, so this nub in that is in currently in District Eight in the Coyote Valley area are all unified in district two because they're, they, they're touching, they're not, there's not, a, um, there's not a, um, an island. The other thing is this um, hand into the hills from district three, it's all in district four, again, to be contiguous. Um, so that's, I think, the, the major changes from C to C2. Mm -hmm. um, with the, the data from, for this plan, its total deviation is 5%. Um, you again can see that there is, um, there's District 5, excuse me, is a majority of lat um, minority Latino seat at 52.7%. Um, and that you have uh, two API seats, um, two majority minority API seats and District 4 at 51.3 and District 8 at 56.1. Um, you have again District Three is close to forty-seven point five, but, but it doesn't hit that fifty percent number. Um, C three is uh, in an F in an effort to follow your guidance. 
to do a minimal change um, to to the current lines. Um, and the biggest changes again are because of growth, right? District three, three and four need to shrink in popul or in area because they're overpopulated, whereas districts nine and ten need to become larger because they're underpopulated. Again, this is an overview that shows all the neighborhoods um, shaded in the city. Um, I think looking um, again at the overlay with the current lines, you can see that um, there has been the, the minimal change um, that I already identified. You can see that two um, has coyote, um, the Coyote Valley and the Little Nub um, here. That's a big, that's a change, but District 8 is basically the same. It, it grew slightly in taking in one neighbor, na neighborhood here. Um, there, you can see that District 3 really made very slight alterations. Um, there was a little bit of population swap between 3 and 4, um, but the, the rest of the districts really um, followed the current lines. I think the other thing is District 6. Um, you have, I, this was an effort to, I think, to, to um, unify the Willow, Willows area. Um, but I, I think if you, this is a, a, a very similar current lines um, district. Now looking at the deviations, this deviation, total deviation is 5.8%. Um, and you can see that in this um, construction, District 5 does not reach majority minority status. It stays at 47.5. Um, and your API seats, you again have um, two seats, District 4 and District 8, that are above um, 50. And in this um, construction, District 7 is the closest, the second or the third closest Asian seat at 46.9%. Um, the final um, C4 is um, an elevation of the unity map that was submitted, I believe on Monday. Um, and what we've done pretty much is follow their lines as much as possible, um, except for changes to um, like this, this splitting. This is the, the visual from Districtor. And you can see that um, they use the current splits um, in the Coyote Valley with the little nub and the wraparound in the, the magenta area that they just aren't contiguous. So we've, we've changed um, those elements, but that's pretty much all we've done. Um, we've left the architecture almost exactly like um, the unity map submission. Um, and looking at the current lines, um, their changes for five and eight are very um, are very very similar to C C three. Um, you can see that the the biggest differences are really in the um, the southern part of the map. Um, you have this District Nine that has a hand that comes into um, what is this? This is District. Um, sorry, I, I guess the, the number didn't stay on, or, or this is District 10, I'm sorry, um, but this, no, the green one, um, I'm sorry, but basically you have this hand that comes in um, and another hand that goes out. There's a, some interesting lines in the interior, but the Eastern Districts and District 7 are very similar to the current lines. District 7 is almost exactly the same. You just see this slight change down here. Um, and slight alterations on, in District 1. But you have a lot of movement in um, the south southern part of the city, south central, I guess, part of the city. Um, and again, looking at this district um, or this plan, you have a 10, an 8.8% total deviation. Um, and again, there's District 5, very similar to C3, has a 47.5% uh, Latino CVAP. Um, it's almost like it's a, it is identical. I think the lines are very are very similar. Um, and then with the API seats, again, you see District Four and District Eight at the majority minority level, and you see District Seven um, a little bit better than in C Three at forty eight point seven percent. 
um, still very close to that majority minority status, but just under the under the fifty percent percent threshold. Now, um, I think at this point it would be great um, if you wanted to open it up and we could dive into any of the plans you want to um, take apart. Um, I have the I have the um, I'll just show you. I have um, the district images so we can zoom in. I also have HTML and aptitude ready. So if we wanna zoom into an area, we wanna explore um, any breaks or any streets we can, um, but I would like to return it to the chair to start talking about which map you maybe wanna start with and um, go from there. To raise their hands for questions. I think one, one I guess, uh, issue that we certainly will need to tackle is how to deal with the overpopulation in District 4, right, which some of these maps deal with. So I'm, I'm wondering if um, we could start with the, the southernmost boundary lines of District 4 in um, in one of these maps. Sure. And just and you said um, District Four. Which which map would you like to start with? We start with the draft plan C two. Sure. So um, I'm going to pull up Maptitude so we can um, look at, um, so this is um, draft plan C2. Um, this is district four. And you can see um, the neighborhood lines are on. They're, um, they're outlined with a um, black line. And in for C2, the borders are in red. So you can see that in this plan, um, the C4 um, boundaries are the airport, mm -hmm. the, the Rosemary neighborhood, Trace's Orchard comes across and uses Brokaw. It does, I think there is a slight split of North Valley. Um, uh, the Southern um, boundary of Brook Tree then traces mm -hmm. the freeway down to include all of Berryessa and Penitentiary Creek. Um, slides over and using the southern border of Tanyan and then um, basically just goes east and includes all of Suncrest. And can you can you point to oh okay I see the 101 there. Oh yeah the 101's here. So here's the 101 was it 880, 680? Sorry, no, 680, And I'm sorry, would you be able to do an overlay of, of the current district four? Sure. So this is District 4. Basically, this is the area that's carved out um, due to overpopulation. So you have commercial, various of flea market, South Bay, parts of North Valley, Flickering, Vincy Park, commercial, um, and then elements of, um, it looks like three, out, three neighborhoods along here. The other thing is um, Tunyon currently is in District 3. And that's moved, been moved into District 4. And then you have this um, interesting split of Suncrest 
um, with part of it in District 3 and part of it in District 4. Okay, thank you. Um, I see B. Baragan's hand raised. Hi, Dee Bergen, and I just want to make a recommendation to, you know, is it possible to bring the C2 draft of the map with District 3 to, to bring the boundaries further south to get it as close as we can to the existing council district that we have now? Um, let me see, uh, this C2 is in the active plan in this district, but currently with this configuration, um, district four is underpopulated by 819 people. Mm -hmm. So, um, we could move district four. I guess the question is, should, should this area of the map be moved back into three, um, or actually six, I'm sorry. Um, and then basically just use, try to get as much of, I think we probably could get flicker, flickering. Flicker, flicker, you were actually correct when you, you were talking about the airport area and the Rosemary Gardens neighborhoods. Those are currently in district three. Okay. Um, so right now it looks like they're in district four, according to the C2 map. Now, what I've also noticed with the district three map, um, so Highway 280, when it bends into the 680, into the 280 merge, which is just south of the District 3 map uh, in this current draft, yeah. um, a recommendation to expand District 3 further south as much as possible because um, it would be a cleaner cut right at the freeway uh, in regards to district lines for District 3. Um, what's currently existing is um, right up just south 280, it becomes District 7. Right. So that's usually a better break. So um, if yeah, it's the not not quite there, more further east. So where you have the current draft, yeah, right about there. That's where the current boundary um, ends for District Three, and that the neighborhoods that are in that section. Like that's representing like the the Brookwood Five Wounds Brookwood Terrace, which is a group of four neighborhoods, uh, Roosevelt Park, Olinder, uh, McKinley Bonita neighborhoods. McKinley Bonita neighborhood in District Three is actually divided in half mm -hmm. by McLaughlin Avenue, so you definitely don't want to split that neighborhood up um, with a boundary of half being District Three and half being what looks like District Five in this draft. So. But I guess, my, so as I move into dis, District 4. Um, if we could bring the current draft of District 3 boundaries further south. Right, right, but I won't. Go <laughs> find mommy, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, it's his bedtime and he often no tries to break in. We understand. <laughs> um, so, so basically moving district four south and district three south as well. Correct. In a, and, um, and that area there that you're highlighting now, airport slash Rosemary Gardens, that's currently yeah. in district three. And you'd like it to be back into district three. If we could keep that in district three, that would be ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we could always, you know, mm -hmm. uh, see what we could do on that part as well. Okay. I think the issue too is going to be um, three and four of the two overpopulated districts. Mm -hmm. So as we do that, we're going to need to um, figure out where six, where big, I think one is kind of a, in all the plans, it kind of goes in the unity plan and C3 and C2, it goes up into Valley mm -hmm. up here um, to expand its population slightly. So I think that is, there's, there's other ways to go. We could go, you know, in a different direction. A little slightly north. Yeah, maybe, we go maybe north, right? But perhaps a recommendation to, see, like, um, the way I consider this map, and this is actually citywide uh, recommendation, is 
what types of landmarks are also involved in the city that um, what are we taking away from certain districts and you know what are we adding to certain districts in this case like district one is that kitty western corner of of the city you know what if we kind of expanded it and maybe made the airport part of district one that's just a recommendation um you know we could play around with that that like going um a please. little bit north and maybe taking away of four and merging it to one you know um and somehow shrinking district six just a little bit in because in district six from what i can kind of tell here i mean delmas park is that in district six in this draft i can't really tell I the delmas park I, neighborhood, I, which yeah is it is I, I believe it is in this is one. it in district six in this draft? i think I think so. So you, you, we got the up and up and coming Google Google complex. Yeah, that's it's right going here. To be so it is in that, sense. Okay. So if you got if you have you know something like that that's going to going to be in the works, you know you, that's going to be a big big attraction for that district. Mm -hmm. So perhaps. Uh, you know, redrawing the lines a little bit and maybe like a recommendation to be a little more creative in regards to how we merge the airport, um, how we take into things like Santana Row or um, the Winchester Mystery House, you know, like those kind of landmarks. How, how are we affecting certain districts and are we even um, taking, you know, are, are we going to be adding uh, to the to the economy or going to be taken away from the economy those are really big um considerations to to think about when we do this and when it comes to the downtown core which is district three currently you know we there are so many neighborhoods and and they're really the older neighborhoods as well of the downtown core you know we want to make sure that we're not dividing uh, these older neighborhoods and these here, the, the 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 neighborhoods you're referring to, the district three neighborhoods. Yeah. yeah. So right there, you're in like the the north side area. The see, Booster, like just side, just yeah. yeah. It's so hard for me to read. Um, yeah. It looks like we're almost dividing like the Nagley Park neighborhood, and that's you know we we don't want to do those do that to any neighborhood really. I well, think, we have them in two different. I think Negley's whole. Yeah. Is that District 5? No, that's just, yes, it's District 5. So see, like, like what I'm looking at right now in, in the division here, my, my own neighborhood, Roosevelt Park, that's divided by two or almost, yeah, by two different districts. We got part of it being in what looks like District 3 and the second half in District 5. And that's also splitting up the Brookwood Terrace. Um, no, it's district. Just Brookwood Terrace is all united here. Roosevelt is united in five as well. It looks like that that uh, northern boundary though, where it says five wounds. Yeah. Where it five wounds, that's also Roosevelt. Oh. So, uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, in in the city map, these are two two different neighborhoods, but okay. No, yeah. they're they're one. It's one neighborhood. Five wounds is in Roosevelt Park. If we can continue to keep that as District Three, any everything west of the 101, we it would be a highly uh, recommendation to to keep it as three, keep it all in the same district. Okay. Again, um, we'll work on um, making these changes. I think we have to just understand that not all of them can be accomplished in one map uh, mm -hmm. because of the population changes but um we'll we'll do our best to do basically getting four and three back to um its closest i hope that c3 accomplishes some of the goals that you outlined okay. thank you thank you um commissioner wright hey, thank you madam chair First off, I want to say thank you to Chris and redistricting partners for hearing our concerns last week. 
uh, when we were kind of taken aback with the draft map. So thank you for hearing us as well as from hearing the public comment that was made as well. Um, I do want to urge uh, more outreach to the community because I know for the district I represent, District 10 here on the commission, we have received limited uh, community input and we, you know, I personally really need that as far as as we're looking at these maps. Um, and I know that you had mentioned, Chris, in your presentation about the need for feedback from the community and I am appreciative of those who are attending tonight. I think this is probably our best attended meeting yet. So thank you for those who are uh, watching tonight. But something that I do want to stress is that we're taking a look at the school boundaries, that we're not separating those within among the different districts, as well as keeping neighborhood associations whole. And also, uh, I again encourage that we keep Amadin whole as well. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Didolson. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I have some specific comments. Um, so for Chris, so on the D6 that we're looking at on C2, um, and I just had to say that the maps that are available on the agenda, I don't know if this is just me, but C3 and C2 look to be the same. So I'm not sure if maybe they got uploaded twice or what, but um, just work with C2. So right now the top of district six got expanded in a material way east into what I consider to be downtown. Um, and really the, the point of demarcation that I use is the is 87, the Guadalupe freeway right there. I really, I don't see it making a lot of sense to push D6 east of the Guadalupe Freeway, um, particularly when you come down into what I consider to be the heart of D6 and you've cut out North Willow Glen and various neighborhoods that all access Lincoln Avenue and all the shopping, the restaurants, you've cut that out of D6. I don't think that those two things standing together make a lot of sense. So if we could use that Guadalupe freeway as kind of a more natural boundary to the extent possible. I strongly recommend that. Um, and yes, collateral benefits that make sense, right? Because right now on this map, it looks like Japantown is cut in half almost, right? And D3 has part of it, D6 has part of it. And I think based on the emails that I read, 102 pages of, of emails since our last meeting, people are not going to love that very much. Um, and also the other issue, which is slightly smaller, but if you come to the southern border of D6, you, you're using Husted Avenue as kind of the point of demarcation. That's okay, I suppose, um, but I would far prefer that to maintain a more natural boundary, which I think is more of a push in South to Coke and West to Meridian. That is kind of where I see a more natural boundary for D6. Um, but I do agree that the Kanoa Gardens area, which is now being absorbed into what I think is District 9, I think that makes a lot of sense. So um, that, those are kind of my initial comments on, on the revision. But I, I certainly think that this was a, a more productive uh, start. I think one of the things that you um have to realize is that district six and its current construction is under deviate under deviated by 0.3 percent um and um it really needs to grow east um because it currently is also underpopulated um so we i can try to do the 87 as the um as it's as its border and move it farther south but that also means that district nine um needs to um sorry district nine would need to grow as well because again that's another nine and ten are the slowest growing areas of the whole city and have to expand into they have to gain population so if district six moves south then nine and ten and and two are going to have to move east and north to some extent so you're going to have to have swaps in in seven in eight and um 
So those are the ripple effects with redistricting. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And so be it. Um, if right. that's what has to happen, then that's what I suggest we at least explore. And I mean, this yeah. Almaden Expressway, you, you've got most of Kanoa Gardens in there for D9, but you've got a whole, you know, fingertip, if you will, right there yeah. um, that is still in D6. And you could use Almaden as a more natural boundary into the south. And to the extent you need to push D6 East over 87, over 87 into downtown, okay. But the portion where you're breaking up, you know, a piece of Willow Glen out of that area, I don't understand that that's kind of counter to what you just told me because you're pushing D7 west into or southwest into Willow Glen. So I'm just, to the extent we can, we can counterbalance this a little bit, I think it would make sense also from a compactness standpoint, using the natural boundaries, the principles that were espoused to us during the training, as I understand it at least, that would honor those principles with more consistency. So you're saying you you would like to, to bring Willow Glen, all of basically unify all of these neighborhoods here that are in D9 now? To the extent possible. I mean, I understand that D9 needs population growth, but I mean, my first order of priority is to kind of, is the further north and right. then counterbalancing that with the Eastern push over 87 into downtown. Wow. Because I think that that takes away from what I understand to be some of the communities of interest in D3 and creates in D7 a very odd looking district, in my opinion. And it pushes it pushes into Willow Glen and it really is not a part of Willow Glen. It just doesn't doesn't make any sense to me. OK, that's not. That's, thank you. That's a, those are great comments. All right. Thank you. So, uh, Commissioner Sidbury. Yes, uh, I want to just add on just a few things. Uh, uh, thank you again, Chris, for the presentation. It was what we really needed. Um, uh, it seems like, Chris, you'll be coming back to probably give us another presentation with your, with the maps. So I'm hoping that, if all possible, is it a possibility to use the maps that we had in 2011 versus and have the maps of 2120 that you're doing now side by side. I don't know if that's a possibility or not, but uh, for me, it would really give me a better insight as to where, as to what boundaries and how much of boundaries have actually changed on your suggestions. Uh, I don't know if that's something that uh, the citizens of our communities, various communities would like to see, but um, I think that uh, all in all, it, it would, probably um, uh, help them see exactly if their uh, districts are shrinking or if they're going to be increasing. Um, also, um, uh, in our district, if you can pull it up a little bit more, that would be great. Uh, the map itself that you have displayed now. Which district? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, district 7, Chris. Okay. Yeah. Um, and um, actually, I think... Uh, uh, we had a population uh, difference of about 19 to 20,000 citizens in District 7 that was Asian American. But yet, it seems like I think you said that in the southern part of District 7, uh, did you say we were taking a little bit away and giving it to District, was that 10 or 2? Was that a comment you made or am I mistaken? No. So, I mean, you can see the, um, the outline of 7. Um, yeah. Here is this black line. Uh huh. So, yeah. Right. It um, it includes. So you are giving a little bit to nine here. Um, you're giving up a little bit of two into two of the seven trees area. Um, you're giving away yeah. part of Dove Hill and Ramblewood um into eight, and then you're you're moving this this um, version moves District Seven into District Five taking in right. Valley Palms and um, Tropicana, and then also takes in um, Tamien and um, Goodyear Mastic, Guadalupe, Washington, and Vir the Virginia and, and Martha, and, so and includes South um, University um, neighborhoods. So it, it, it does um, have a, basically it's moving kind of into the middle of the map. Um, and this isn't, again, because both districts 
um, three and three and four have to give uh -huh. up. So you're having a lot of the districts moving north and, and east. Like we, we've just talked through district six did that district seven's doing that. Um, and a lot of the Southern districts because they're, they need to grow are moving also moving north. Uh, so that's the, that, that's the trade-off in this so, map. Okay. So we got Santa Teresa and Carl in the Southern part of the district seven. Oh, wow. That's kind of weird. Okay, well, um, I, I would just like to, to see side by side because the thing is, you know, if we got about, what, 99,000 people in District 7? Yeah. I think pretty close to that. In so this, in this map, it's, where? you've got 104,000 people. So it's actually over deviated. So it could, it could shrink um, uh -huh. if, if you wanted. You could um, give up or have neighborhoods move out of district seven into the um, surrounding districts. If you thought maybe the combination didn't make sense. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, we can still look into that and, uh, you know, explore that part of it. Uh, I think that was it. Oh, yes. One more thing. One more thing. I'm sorry. In drawing your new map or maps, uh, I don't know if you were able to privilege to having the suggestions from citizens in our community as to what they wanted. I think I think you went directly on uh, what the uh, population would bear. Am, am I no, wrong to so think we, that or we reviewed the districter maps um and the public comment um, okay okay in in this revisions i think one of the challenges has been that um you're i think at this point i don't know if there's new, been new maps drawn in districter but you're up to 60 maps but i think about three quarters of those maps were submitted since we've put out um draft maps so it's been it's been hard to keep up but um, I think for the next revisions, we'll really look. We'll we'll really look to those district, those maps, um, and to your comments and any other public comments that we received tonight um, to come closer and get better and reflect um, the testimony that we've received. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Chris. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Fadum. Thank you, and I apologize. I uh, was driving, and I'm just now able to actually look at the maps. But I have to echo um, a previous commissioner what my concern is in light of the testimony from regarding District Three. The map really shows that uh, the area of Japantown, which is a, a, a real concern from the testimonies received, is cut in half. And I, and I think we really need to take a look at that needs to be moved somehow to encompass the whole area and not split because that is dividing that community into where it is of strong community of interest. So I am really concerned about that part of the map. So I guess, uh, so this is Japantown. This is the actual lines, um, the cities of the city's neighborhoods. So you have Jap Japantown and Luna Park and Japantown and Hens Hensley, and they're all in District 3. So what I'm looking at, though, is I think Japantown, let's see where I had it. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at also on my laptop. Um, so this, look, I, I'm using the city's neighborhood lines. That, that, and, right. You know, and so if, if they're too small and Japantown is larger, um, we can note that and we can make sure to unify it. The One of the things that I did do with, with this plan, and I think you, you'll see in both C3 and this unity map in C4, is that Japantown, both of these areas are united in one district, usually in District 3. Okay, so my concern is, and I'm looking exactly, because in that area, technically, and I see how you're going by the labeling, but 
the community of Japantown with the businesses and some of the residents actually do extend down uh, Jackson Street and North First, which is not in District 3. And I think that is part of the concern of what we're hearing from the community. And I think maybe what we need to do is just take another look at that um, and extend it just a little bit because that, although it may not be considered on the maps as uh, Japantown, it certainly is part of the community. That community. Interest. Yeah. yeah. So would would extending District Three to the eighty seven and using that as the as the demart as the line between six and seven or six and three make the most sense, if possible? If possible, I think so. Okay. But again, I I would want to look at the, you know what's that going to cause with the population. Right. Um, but it it does make more sense with regard to the community interest. Um, the only other. Uh, issue I had too is you talked a little bit about the Berryessa um, uh, flea market. Yes. So we know that that's going to go away and become residential. Um, and I don't know, do we, it's not going to be immediate. What's going to happen? I mean, it, we're not going to redistrict for 10 years. It's going to happen within that 10 years. Do we account for that now and try to foresee or do, are we strictly trying to redistrict with what the current census shows? So the, the answer to that question is, um, is complicated. Um, you can add um, future population growth as a, like an, an extra criteria, but I think given um, the, the amount of community of interest testimony and the push to keep neighborhood associations whole, to really follow major natural boundaries and streets, that it, that under underpopulating district three um i guess it, it you know i can, we can explore it i just don't want it to cause the other more kind of higher criteria um uh, goals to be um undervalued if that makes sense yeah i do and that's why i was curious how we deal with that when we know especially in this area we know certain areas that are about to turn into high residential populations uh, over the next three to five years. Got it. Thank you, Commissioner Alvarez. Yes, could we look at um, at District Eight? Sure. Okay. So I'm looking at, um, yeah, District 8, the villages, that's the thing. And um, the Welch Park area, for, there's Meadow Fair, and then there's the Welch Park. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm trying to see. So that's one area that's changed from um, the current lines. Yes. That um, this black um, border is the current lines. So District 8 moved in, um, in now has part Dove Hill and Ramble, Ramblewood from District 7 um, mm -hmm. and then goes north, but then stops short of unifying all of Welch Park. Yeah, because there's a school right here by Welch Park. That's Kara Smith, Catherine Smith. Smith. Um, so, yeah. So this is, you can see, so, this, you know, these are the current lines here. Um, and it used to go into over Overtville High and you um and and had part of Welch Park. Doesn't look like it included all of Welch Park in it uh -huh. um, last time, but right. or currently, excuse me. Um so we could look at this is maybe um it would be a three-way swap, it's, right? Well, I don't know how um, it would come up and take in this portion. Um, D7 would probably um, have to gain, would gain back what it lost um, and D5 would come back and need to take a little bit of um, D7 where it, where it, where they overlap, like maybe in this area. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, because we serve the families from Valley Palms and the Valley Palm area. Those families go to our schools. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I wanted to see the, the Welch Park. So you've kept a school uh, and we are taking in Ocala. Yeah. Okay. But I, I believe that this is the current line. So it, it traces the current line. Um, I think one thing, it also, um, you can see that uh, District 5 comes south a little bit and to, to unify all of Calico Creek. And then there is a little bit of a um, split of the Boger and Furnish Park area um, yeah. in the northeastern corner. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just curious about uh, Kara Smith there, right here. And then you've got, we've got um, on West Evergreen, that area there. We have a, we had a, we have a school, Obi Whaley there. So that's still, and that's still part of. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the, 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 the Eastern boundary is the same because right. It's the, it's the city line. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not changing. No, um, I'm looking at the Western. Western on the West, the forest, West, uh, West Evergreen. Oh. Over that, here, I'm sorry. That is, that is still continued to be District 7. Yeah, the the line, it uses the current line and splits, um, well, it has Meadow, Meadow Fair and LaVey um, mm -hmm. in District 8 um, mm -hmm. and West Evergreen and um, Windmill Springs in District 7. Okay, well, that's the way it used to be before. Yeah. Okay, no, that's fine. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Diddleson. Yeah, I just had two um, follow-up comments um, on that. Using the 87 as the potential boundary between or moving it over for D3 and D6 um, on the north side of the districts. Um, you could also, depending on what the numbers come back with, Chris, that north first street, in my opinion, would also be a uh, improved uh boundary line as opposed to what it looks like right now if you can't get all the way over to guadalupe to the 87. Okay. um and then i just wanted to point out one thing um and with the current lines that you maybe not appreciate unless you're really from the area if you look where the 280 and bird intersect okay yeah 280 and then you come down to bird there like right around there if you zoom in there so you see if you see if you pull it back sorry just a little bit you'll see there are train tracks that kind of run right through that little peninsula right there and those train tracks are basically the boundary between the that portion of north willow glen and then where the west virginia street there's a little neighborhood right in there that's on the other side of the train tracks and there was a gentleman um, who testified a number of times early on um, very passionately about living in that neighborhood and i think he always associated himself as part of district three i believe is what's that neighborhood is right now um, so that would be another area where there would be some precedent to keep that in maybe in, in D3 or keep that in D7 as you have it now, um, if, as you're playing kind of with the numbers and trying to kind of keep things as contiguous as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner yes. Collins. Uh, yes, hi. Um, Thank you, Chris, for your hard work on all of this. It's mind-boggling mind in a lot of ways to me <laughs> to do this. Um, I had a question about District 3 and reading the testimony of over 100 pages that we heard from residents. Um, there's a lot of concern with District 3, and I think I'll let the residents will represent themselves, I think, better than I could. But I have a question specifically about San Jose State. and. If I'm reading this right, is San Jose State in one district, the pink district there? Because I see South University, I see University, and I see SJSU. Yeah. 
Um, you kind of start with three. Can you see that in the map? Because it seems to me San Jose State, it, which is not a huge campus really when you think about it, although it has a south campus down 10th Street with sports areas and so forth. Yeah, I think um, you'll see that it's kind of split because you've got university, South University in two different districts, and then center, this part of the campus in another. So I think C, C2 probably does the worst job of, um, of in the university area. I think in C3 and the university map, you'll see, or the, sorry, the unity map, you'll see a better construction um, around the campus. So are, is C2 and C3, aren't they the same? They look alike to me. No, they're, they're different. Um, they are different? Okay. Yeah. And C4 is the unity map. Exactly. So C, C3, let's see how they, C3, um, you can see um, better unifies, um, the, you know, so you have all three neighborhoods all in one um, in, in District 3. I think that's ideal, but uh, you know, to keep that to keep the university together like that. And the the line, the the southern district, the southern border of district um, district three is the two eighty. Yeah. And the other thing with um, with this map is that the eighty seven, um, I guess, is not used the whole. I'm just trying to for um yeah district six would need to grow um north you can see here this is the two this is the 87 here so um d6 doesn't do what um the, your one of your commissioners has talked about so but moving back to c2 I'm sorry I'm getting but I think one of the things about the about these is some some of the what you've already what was been discussed is in c3 um I think there is a very different construction um, in the unity map in C4. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, what thank I would you. like to propose is maybe one more round of questions and comments from the commission, and then uh, we'll open it up for public comment and then return back to the commission for further discussion after hearing public comment. Um, so uh, Dee Berrigan. Thank you. I would like to echo what uh, Commissioner Collins uh, recommend, recommended was uh, the map C3 does reflect um, the neighborhoods as a whole, including the university, and that is more ideal to the uh, downtown core and the downtown area, the areas surrounding it. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sudbury. I see your hand raised. Is that from the last session? The last I'm session? sorry. Yes, that's from the last session. I'm sorry. Thank you. I need to take that off. Commissioner Wright. Yes, thank you. Chris, would you be able to show us uh, the boundaries for District 10? Because I know that there are significant changes as far as with District 9, District 2. So I think it would be helpful for all of us to be able to see what that looks like. Sure, so for um, for D10, it uses the same line um, except for here, where it um, the new district um, goes, up, okay. goes north and goes to the, uh, and, and unifies Fox Chase. Right, right, okay. And, and it follows the 87 like it currently does. Um, um, again, it it does you know sorry it does unify um, Navarez. Um, it was slightly split in the old districts, and then it basically follows the same line. There is this little area where I I, I unified um, Rancho Santa here, but then the rest of it, I believe, is the same line. Oh, except except for it includes gl um, Glider um, okay. Glider neighborhood here, um, and then. Sorry about that. Then the other thing I think with District 10 is um, it the current line split Coyote Creek, um, and 
into 10 and 2. Um, this, because um, you can see the line here, mm -hmm. this, because it's, it's not, but it's not contiguous, you really can't connect 10 to Coyote Creek in any way through city, pro city land. So all of Coyote Creek um, and Santa Teresa, this whole area is all in District 2. And you can see the same is, so this like the expanded area of San Jose is all mm -hmm. in two because it's it's all connected. There's there's no way to connect ten and this area of, of southern San Jose. Yeah, my concern is whether it would split up as far as uh, the families that are going to Leland High School. The problem is you really can't break the contiguous rule. Like mm. it's thing, it's either yes or no. Um, and it's either legal or it's not. So there's not much wiggle room, um, especially when you have school there. an area that's connected. Um, contiguous mm -hmm. is the second, um, it's kind of the second thing we look to after population, then comes community of interest. So it's an area that you were, you were given some leeway in 2011, but in uh. under the current law, I believe, um, you don't have that same leeway. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that, because I think that there would be misunderstanding regarding that, especially because if you're looking at it from a residence perspective, that we have the parks there. So we're considering it being contiguous. Right. And I, th I think like the there is a. So there is a map out there that shows all like all of this being San Jose, but it but under the under the actual lines of the city, you can see that there is certain areas that have not been annexed and not unified. It's not like so this whole area, right, is not technically San Jose, like the white. You can yeah, see. County. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Chris. No problem. Thank you. Um, I'd like to move on next to allow um, members of the public. Uh, to speak on the this topic. Okay, I'd like to start with um, Chava Bustabanti. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, Hello. we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Chava Bustamante. I'm a member of Latinos United for a New America, and I live in <laughs> District Nine. I'm uh, calling to state my support for the unity map. For many years, a handful of politicians have uh, divided us into districts that serve their political interests instead of our community's needs. An example of this is Willow Glen that was divided into three districts when it makes more sense to split it into two between District 6 and uh, District 9. The southwestern uh, portion of Willow Glen, south of Pine Avenue, west of Creek Drive, has more in common with District 9, largely single-family neighborhoods and suburban feel. We need a transparent process we can trust, where communities remain whole, and where people of color, young voters, and renters have an equal voice. The Unity Map helps us accomplish these goals. Please adopt the Unity Map. Thank you. I'd like to go to Jeffrey Buchanan. Uh, Sorry, we, we, two of us were, were unmuting and we, we stepped over each other. Um, all right, are we good now? Yes. I, oh, did I you want to share, I, Jeffrey, did you want to share your screen? I, no, I think I think uh, I emailed you about trying to present next week, but I'm glad to okay. get comments. Um, sorry, just not okay. set up to uh, get into map and tune and things. Um, uh, good good evening, uh, members of the commission. Uh, Jeffrey Buchanan, on behalf of uh, the partners of the, the kind of the Unity Mapping Table, uh, the Asian Law Alliance, the NAACP, the Latino uh, Leadership Alliance, the La Raza Roundtable, uh, Silicon Valley Rising Action, and South Bay Labor Council put together. Uh, a unity map that was was emailed to you as the commissioners and that uh, the redistricting partners staff uh, put together a version of it in the, the C4 map presented to you this evening. Uh, we think that this does a important job of, of 
bringing together uh, some of our leading civil rights groups uh, to look at how can we ensure the voices of our Latino, Asian American, Black, low income renter voices that you know, typically have not uh, been as well served in the city have an equal say going forward and that we respect the communities of interest that have been lifted up throughout this process. Uh, I hope you take the opportunity to review the map. Uh, certainly it, it, it accomplishes many of the goals that uh, folks the commission have, have mentioned. Certainly it keeps uh, Albany Valley whole as Commissioner Wright has mentioned. It uh, looks at a boundary in terms of moving District 6 uh, to some extent over into the downtown following that North First Street line uh, that Commissioner Dibbleton had, had mentioned. Uh, we keep most, I believe we follow the Evergreen School District in terms of the outlines of, of uh, District 8, uh, largely District 8, District 5, uh, District 1, and District 7 uh, remain in their existing lines. Uh, the movements we make, uh, particularly in, in, in the south of the city, looking at District 2, uh, bringing its existing lines, moving along the I-85 corridor and some of the multifamily uh, neighborhoods that that fit more of the character, fit with more of the character or of uh, District 2. Uh, we think combined these movements uh, make sense, re reflect the community's interest stated to date, and, and increase the, the, the equity across lines going forward. Look forward to presenting on this more in the next meeting. Thank you so much. Gabby? Hi. Um, I, I, um, I appreciate all the information I received tonight, um, but I was more interested in seeing if you guys can talk about the C4 map. And in, the reason why I, um, I was kind of uh, bummed out you guys didn't talk about it is because, you know, a lot of um, Latino, Native American, African American, and Asian community um, organizations work together to create that map. And me specifically, um, I live in the Ocala area and my neighbors, really feel like we're part of that Alum Rock um, area. And um, I always, I never really, and our neighbors never really felt like we were a part of um, the, I think district, uh, Silvia Arenas district. We wanted to always be a part of district five. So I was hoping you guys can take that in consideration. Thank you so much. Julie. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So um, I, I would love to have someone put the C3 map up that was just there because it really helps to have a visualization. But um, from your online documents, you talk about how redistricting can keep people with common interests, cultures, languages, and histories bundled together. And in, in looking at the C2 map where you had District 6, 3, 7, and 5 dividing up the university and downtown area, I think it's really important that you look at what are natural divisions, particularly to downtown and the transportation corridors through downtown um, that are all running down East Santa Clara Street. 87 to 101 creates natural barriers to the east and west parameters of downtown. 280 creates a southern border. Um, so that, those three boundaries create very distinct neighborhoods that relate to downtown that have been unified neighborhoods where there are many development projects, BART coming through from Five Wounds to Deeradon, you're trying to separate neighborhoods. Um, and it needs to be very clear that these neighborhoods all can walk to downtown, do walk to downtown. If you can't or won't walk to downtown, then that downtown core district isn't part of where you live. So I don't understand how they can think that some of these southern and Western neighborhoods relate better to the downtown core than the ones that have historically been associated with them, including the South University, my neighbors in Julian St. James, Horace Mann, Nagley Park, all of the Sun and San Jose State University with City Hall and the downtown core touching San Jose State. So you really need to look at how to keep that a strong and vibrant neighborhood as huge changes and developments are coming there with transportation corridors. Thank you. Caller 5140. Yeah, I don't think making District 9 bigger would be better. I live in District 9 and 
at least the people who manage it, Pam Foley, they don't, they got burned out buildings, potholes, and road diets, and all these stupid, they want to be, you know, she's a big proponent of building the village in Cambrian Park Plaza that nobody really wants. Uh, I don't, I don't see, at least in my area, any reason to, to move its borders. It can't handle, I mean, if anything, it should make District 9 smaller because can't handle what it already has and it's a rather large district so for me i vote no on any uh making district nine bigger and i think that the city is really misguided in its downtown with trying to get rid of parking and uh, doing all these things you're not going to be able to attract residents or visitors to the area most of those high rises are vacant uh, that have been built. They've been bought up by speculators, by the way. That's why they can't keep anything open down there, even in good economic times. So I don't know where you, I think it's a phony population that's in the downtown. Uh, the, the students are only there for, you know, spring or fall and spring semester, not on a quarter system. So I don't know, you, you guys are, the whole thing is misguided. And quite frankly, you shouldn't even do anything. You're just wasting money, time, when you need to focus on more infrastructure issues uh, and not getting rid of infrastructure, say like parking or getting rid of infrastructure like road diets. So this, uh, w this city always tries to do things it shouldn't have its hands in. And it seems as if it doesn't have its hands in things like infrastructure, this whole redistricting thing. I, I, I don't. Brenda Doman. Hi, yes, this is my uh, first redistricting meeting. I took a lot, look at the maps and um, I'm not really familiar with the people that are on the commission. And so I was wondering, um, uh, maybe a show of hands, how many have lived in San Jose for more than 10 years? Two, okay. And how many work in San Jose? Three, okay, wow. Sounds like we have a lot of outside influence on what's going on in our own city. And that really, really bothers me because it doesn't seem like you really have a stake in the game. It looks like you're trying to fix elections or redistrict for some sort of political gain instead of for the, the best interest of the residents. And that really bothers me. And maybe you should, um, you know, check your conscience. And maybe your council person should appoint someone who has a stake in San Jose, because San Jose matters. I've lived here for over 26 years. I have a stake. You don't seem to have a stake in our city. Anyway, that's all I had to say. Thanks a lot. Before I move on to the next speaker, I'd just like to say every member of this commission is a resident of the district that they represent. Um, that was required when they were appointed. The next speaker is Bonnie Mace. Hi, I'm, I'm Bonnie Mace. I'm the executive director of the Santa Clara County School Boards Association. And I want to appreciate um, all of the um, commissioners, especially Commissioner Wright this evening, who talked about not separating schools and making sure that school districts are within the same council district. I know when I was on the redistricting commission 10 years ago, we really did try to look at that. And so that's very important. There are 19 school districts in the city of San Jose. So I uh, really do appreciate you focusing on that. Now, in terms of district eight in my area, there was the, the part that commissioner um, Alvarez spoke about, which is Obi Whaley. So Chris, I would encourage you to see if you could put Obi Whaley, which currently is in District 7, if you could put it back into District 8, because that would um, enable us to have a more cohesive district um, in the Evergreen School District. And the last thing is I really appreciate the fact that you have maps that are um, available to be drawn by the citizenry. When I did this 10 years ago, we didn't have that. And it's such an amazing thing and really do appreciate that the commissioners are really looking at the maps that the citizens have drawn. I think it really helps um, participation. So once again, thanks again to all the commissioners for all your hard work. 
Matthew Bright. Hello, this is Matthew Bright. Um, I'm a resident of D6 and also representing the New Hall Neighborhood Association, which has parts of D3 and parts of D6. Um, there is uh, a lot of good high level discussion. This is actually a very pointed uh, discussion that I have here. Specifically, it affects the uh, plan C, C2, and C3 um, in particular. And uh, Commissioner Ditlitson, I'll, I'll follow up with you separately via email and Tony um, with the details. But there are, there's a very strange line drawn in the vicinity of the Caltrain tracks, um, 880 and the Alameda, which cuts through a townhouse complex in a very strange way. Um, I doubt that it was intended to be done in that manner, but it seems to be. Um, and uh, unfortunately, the resolution of the maps that's posted to the website uh, under the draft maps doesn't allow to, to zoom in. Uh, but somehow I found a, a GIS version and it seems that that's actually cutting through an, uh, a condo complex, uh, which I don't think is intended. And it's certainly not what we would, um, what we would want to see. So um, I, I will follow up with, uh, with both of you um, to make sure that you have access to that. Um, so that can hopefully be corrected in a future version of the map. Wolf, Wolfram Schneider. Yeah, hello, can you hear me? Yes. My name is Wolfram Schneider. I live since 20 years in D3. I'm currently a member of the PIVIT board and the downtown parking board. So I'm pretty familiar with the downtown core. Uh, my understanding is that there was a letter issued or provided to, you know, the commission either yesterday or today from several downtown associations, and that also includes some maps. And one of the maps is the San Jose Downtown Business Association, which is affiliated, you know, also with the PBIT. The PBIT employs a service called Groundworks, and uh, my recommendation would be that we do not uh, you know, divide these kind of services in two different districts. So you may want to have a look at this map and also make sure that these services are under one uh, council district. Thank you. Blair, <clears throat> Blair Beekman. Hi, thank you, Blair Beekman. Um, thanks for this meeting tonight. Uh, hopefully I can offer some sort of uh, weak need opinion uh, to help out the process here. Um, you know, I've I've lived here off and on for a number of years and, and it uh, just my general person is not really <laughs> respected, but I really try to contribute when I can. Um, you know, if you don't have years of living in San Jose, it, it can be a mark against you, but it doesn't have to be the whole world. Good luck how we can all work towards that better future of San Jose we're all trying to consider at this time. Um, I personally feel that District 6, um, from, you know, the, the new Google Village to the Horseshoe area to Willow Glen, to me, that's District 6. I used to live by the uh, Santa Clara University border of San Jose. I didn't... Uh, I didn't like being a part of District 6 there. Don't ask me why. The city charter process was, um, it's been working on how to add a few more uh, districts to the future of our city charter. Um, that would be an interesting area to have its own little district, maybe tied into the airport. And perhaps in District 2, to split up the long corridor of District 2 into two separate districts for, for its constituents. I think that's another interesting idea. I think uh, idea uh, C3 was really interesting how you talked about uh, District 3, where you brought that over into the east side and made District 5 uh, come into downtown area. Thank you. Uh, that was interesting. Everyone likes uh, uh, C4, I think. Uh, I, I don't want to argue too much. I don't like the District 6 coming up to the freeway. Um, I don't know what else to say. There's other stuff I can add. but. Uh, Good luck. District 7 was interesting what you're doing with that. Good luck with these issues. Thank you. Sandra Delvin. Uh, thank you very much, Commissioners. This is my first time and I started looking at the maps on Saturday. I am going to talk about current District 3. I do not live in District 3. But when I look at the map of District 3 and all the proposals, 
I feel like you're forgetting that there is a major institution there, which is San Jose State University. And there are students that live around that. And this university has a north campus and a south campus. Those campuses on the maps I've looked at are split up. Not only that, the neighborhoods that have the students that live around San Jose State are split up. So that students that live on the west side may not be in the same district as the students on the east side. This to me, if I could give you a visual image, is like taking the Apple site, major site in Cupertino as a business and splitting it in half. There's a tremendous influence of San Jose State and the 33,000 students that that are at, in that institution. And you're not, whoever's drawing these maps aren't looking at, in my view, the communities and what's impacting those communities. Um, although I don't work for San Jose State, I can't imagine having two councils to deal with when there's some issue in the communities that are impacted by the presence of San Jose State. So I really feel like whatever you're doing in the downtown is not reflecting the communities. Now you talk about communities of interest. There is a big community. San Jose State is a big community. It has an impact on there and you should be looking at making sure that that impact is addressed. Thank you for your time. Again, I do not live in D3. So my opinion is coming from somebody who looks at it from a different view. Lenny's Gutierrez. Hi, and good evening. Uh, my name is Lenny's Gutierrez. I'm the chair of the Latino Leadership Alliance. So really appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, and I am here to speak in support of Map C4 and the Unity Map. Uh, it was said earlier, the, the Unity Map was submitted by the Asian Law Alliance, by the Latino Leadership Alliance, the NAACP, and the La Raza Roundtable. We really appreciate if you would listen to the voice of these well-respected organizations that represent the diversity of San Jose. And also as the letter um, which we submitted states, um, our goal in submitting the Unity Map is to ensure that communities of color have a more equal voice in the city's future. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Nancy? Hello, are you got me? This is Wade, I'm on Nancy. Um, I live, we live in the D3. I have a few different concerns in the D3 Vendome area. Um, a couple things just to mention. I I'm not comfortable with all the special interest groups we're listening to tonight. The Unity Map Company Special Interest, as that last woman mentioned. It seems to me we're dealing with individual neighborhood interests not umbrella special interest concerns. So when we hear from a community or a group that special interest concerns, I don't see how that fits into these discussions. I mean, to some extent we need to listen to them and, and take note, but I feel like they're getting an un, unfair uh, amount of notice. The unity map itself was that that was developed by special interests and, and we keep referring to it like it's the standard. So that seems a bit bothersome. Um, main concern for my one and talk is relative to Vendome. The portion of the of the Vendome in Japantown that you're drawing into six, into District Six, it seems to be, and there's been a lot of discussion about it today, which has been great. I'm glad to hear so many people are aware of it. So I appreciate that. The concern is we have Highway 87, we have all that airport property, that buffer zone that the airport creates. Uh, you know, nationally they create those around every airport. We have a, we have a highway, huge airport buffer zone. We even have a railroad, so there's no way people from six are easily commuting or moving into three. That's that you you can only do it via Taylor Street heading and the highway. There aren't many ways to get through there. There aren't all these different feeder streets. So that to call those, to bring those two areas into being the same area seems completely illogical. My concerns, our concerns are nothing con close to what the Rose Garden concerns are. I don't know what their concerns are. I don't care. I don't imagine they care about 
ours. We're downtown. Like Negley Park is downtown. Japantown is downtown. The Vendome is downtown. We deal with people leaving the prison and going downtown, right through our neighborhoods. They go from downtown to services north of us. They go from the prison area. They go from, from, from north of us through our neighborhoods. We have a, a very, very close connection with downtown and putting us with Rose Garden. They, they, it makes no sense to me at all. So that's what I have to say. Thank you for your time. Marnie Kamsen. Hi, I hope you can hear me. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm delighted that there's now a commissioner from District 3, which is where I live. Um, I want to welcome Ms. Barrigan. I hope I pronounced your name right. And thank you for the comments you made about the boundaries of D3. I'd like to address the issues of community communities of interest in my district. Um, in the 15 years that I've lived here as a Nagley Park resident, my community of interest has been going west towards downtown. Over the years, I've participated in discussions and meetings about downtown BART and affordable housing projects at the old house hospital site with people on the north side, as well as uh, traffic issues, which are caused by festivals. I've attended countless events at the university the student population of the university also has a huge impact on my neighborhood um, from the fraternities and sororities to the parking issues. Additionally, many students and professors live in Nagley. We're con we are connected to other communities as well. Sun, Vendome, Hensley, and all the other communities that make up the core of downtown, like Japantown, we also have strong ties because of the shared history of our older houses. These historical neighborhoods are truly the heart of downtown San Jose. A big concern of mine is the unity map, which to the best of my understanding was created by special interest groups and not San Jose residents. To the best of my knowledge, they are not truly stakeholders and should not have a voice in this process. Redistricting should be done by neighbors, neighborhoods, and communities of interest. We submitted many maps. Why is there a map up front and center being discussed and none of the neighbors or neighborhood maps are being discussed? What do residents need to do to have the same ability and the same attention from you to present a map to you, the commissioners, that these special interests have? Dissecting day three and removing Nagley Park from all the communities that we have worked together for decades makes no sense whatsoever when you are discussing communities of interest. Thank you for listening to my comments and thank you commissioners for volunteering for this daunting task. Trujillo Miguel Vasquez. Hi, uh, good evening. This is Trujillo Miguel Vasquez um, with Grupo Solidaridad. I am a poet and live in District 3. Um, I'm calling you to uh, ask you to, to support the uh, unity map. Um, we have been working hard in our communities. Um, so please support the uh, unity map uh, and not dividing us. Thank you so much. Good night. Greg Rippa. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, thank you. Um, I'd like to just say that I did submit some written testimony, but just wanted to ask you to uh, for two things, and that would be just to one, to see if you can look into combining North San Jose with either the downtown or the Rose Garden area, as opposed to the Berryessa area. And that, in terms of just looking into seeing if that would do a better population balance and to keep the Berryessa neighborhood together. Uh, the second is that I live in the Midtown, Downtown West area um, and do walk and take transit to downtown um, much more so than elsewhere in District 6 um, due to just transit schedules and um, the nature of kind of the transit oriented development that I live in. Um, so I was wondering if you'd be able to also look into keeping uh, these sorts of higher transit usage areas together and then keeping more car dependent and lower density residential uses together. Um, places like Willow Glen and the Cambrian areas um, kind of being uh, two of those kind of lower density uh, areas in general together. Thank you so much. 
caller 5649. You can press star six to unmute. There you go. Okay, caller 5649, I show that you're unmuted. You can go ahead and speak. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Louis Rocha, and I'm a 60-year uh, resident of District 8, and what is now District 8 in San Jose. And I want to unequivocally support the Unity map, and I'd like to make clear that this map is a reflection of many longtime residents such as myself, that have not had a voice in the process. Those that have know San Jose and the history of the county, there have been neglected communities of color in this valley for decades, for generations. So the unity map is, is that. It is uh, a map that reflects many of our uh, communal interests. And so I just want to add that no matter what we look like or where we come from, when it comes to having a say over who represents us, most of us want similar things. So you can put aside that trying to, to tear down what group is speaking here or what, who has a place here or not. We all do. And I want to thank all of your commissioners for your hard work because that there's a problem too much uh, of people that volunteer being, you know, their, their, their qualifications and all this being checked. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for stepping up. And also, I just want to reiterate that by joining together to speak out for fair districting, we can deliver on what all of our schools and families need for a decade to come. We'll be doing this dance again in another 10 years. And again, I want to reiterate that the unity map is what I support and many, many others do as well. And thank you again for your time. Good night. Gabriela Garzon Gupta. Hello, this is Gabriella with the Asian Law Alliance, and I'm calling to support the Unity Map, Map C4. This map maintains our two majority minority Asian districts, as well as our one majority minority Latinx district. This map ensures that we keep our important communities together, such as the Berryessa area, the Penitencia Creek area, and the Alamar Corridor. These lines also take into account our communities of interest for the multifamily housing communities along Highway 85, which has been previously divided under previous district lines. This map to me also does the best way of drawing downtown. It brings together communities of interest in the downtown core and downtown west to help account for the growing number of residents, especially given the new developments planned. The map also keeps together the eastern downtown core and um, together, keeping together important landmarks such as um, the Mineta San Jose Airport, City Hall, and San Jose State, which has been mentioned a few times already. It's important to keep San Jose State together and C4 does the best way of accounting for the different landmarks that do exist in downtown. The, the unity map has been a collaborative process which takes into account our different communities of interest to best represent our renters, our ethnic and our cultural minorities. Thank you for listening. Ken Schneebly. I think I pronounced your name wrong, Ken. Uh, this is Ken Schnibley, and I did not have a comment. Sorry. David? David, go ahead. Yeah, my name is David. I'm a Eastside San Jose resident, and I'm here to support the Unity Map. I still want to echo uh, the other um, speakers when I say that. Um, the organizations that uh, put that together, you know, they work with a lot of vulnerable populations. So, uh, and, you know, that's um, the majority of Eastside San Jose. So, Mayor, support, uh, support the Unity Map. Thank you. Cher? Hi, yeah, this is Cher, and I live in uh, Negley Park in downtown San Jose. I've lived in this area here for. Uh, 20 years and I've lived much, much longer than that in San Jose. And a couple pieces of uh, things that I want to point out on the three new maps that were put on, there's a, uh, a two and a three. They look exactly identical to me. I don't see any difference. And I don't know why it's like that on the website. 
Uh, the thing I want to point out is I don't understand why do you dig out over on Capitol and Alum Rock and carve out pieces and then pull that from downtown four miles away. This just looks like a very contrived map. And then when I look at the C4 map, the C4 map is almost, um, it's not compact at all, which it's supposed to be, and it's almost incongruent. It basically just has a little sliver of a piece cutting across Luna Park over to Bayshore. So that's not even, in my opinion, a legal map on there. And the other thing I want to point out is that all the community interest statements that were initially put in, there's about 10 of them, they're all from, basically all from nonprofits, almost every single one of them. And one of them's even got a, a script in here that says, good afternoon, blah, 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 my name is blank. They forgot to fill in the blank. I mean, this is just a contrived statement from nonprofit groups giving scripts and the people don't even fill in the blank for their name on here. So I just, the whole tone of this is not good. I don't like the you know, and the fact that why is the map, the unity map, we submitted all kinds of maps in the last few days. Why is the unity map also all of a sudden the one that the commission is making a big deal about here? And so I think the residents need to be heard from. And I don't think special interests like nonprofits are, should have such a high point of this. Just like I wouldn't think that developers should come in and have such a big statement in what goes on in the city. I think the residents need to be listened to and be heard from. And Downtown needs to have some attention put to it, um, and I'm glad we've got D on the on the commission now. Thank you, Gina Gates Lopez. Gina, hi, um, I'm Gina Gates Lopez. I am a resident of District. Three um, in the Bonita area. Um, I am in total support of the Unity Map. Um, I do work um, in the community, and these community groups. Um, I really uh, want to stress that these are folks with with their boots on the ground, helping neighbors, helping very likely your neighbors who don't dare uh, go to the to you to say, "Hey, I need some food. I need some protection." Um, you know, I need some housing, I need some COVID relief. Um, so um, I really want to uh, stress how important these community um, agencies are, but they're not just agencies because guess what, folks? You don't make a whole lot of money working in these nonprofits. You do that work because it's work from the heart. So um, with that being said, I'd like to also add, I'm also a homeowner. Um, in an area that has a lot of cars and a lot of multiple families. And, you know, we need to be able to work out a solution together. We know what's going on and see when issues happen, like there's flooding in the street. That doesn't happen to where we live because we have a different infrastructure. But our groups that live here, our people that live here, we understand that these uh, people that work with nonprofit that are at nonprofits, they understand because they also listen to that those groups, these uh, family members and residents. So again, I encourage you to look at the unity map and my dear neighbors, please be considerate and just be open minded and understand these nonprofits. They're us. They're people like me that serve the community, and we have listened and they have listened to me, it's a good idea. Please support the Unity Map. Thank you. Well, the last hand I have up is Kristen Strub. Thank you. Um, so my name is Kristen Struby. I'm a resident of District 3. Um, tonight, I've heard a lot of criticism in regards to the Unity Map. To be honest, um, I, I just got a chance to look at it during this meeting um, because I was unable I, I was unable to successfully navigate the website. So I have another piece of feedback for that as well. But as the last speaker just said, you know, I'd like to echo that these community groups are not large corporations and special interests. You know, they are people that serve our community members that are unable to come and speak on behalf of themselves, whether it's due to language barriers or feeling uncomfortable or not having access to appropriate technology in order to engage or not having a basic understanding of our city's website and being able to download maps on their own and use a computer in order to look at these maps. So 
they are very important organizations that help give a voice to our most vulnerable, vulnerable population in the city. So I think it's important that while we recognize that they are organizations, that they are here to support our community members. And um, maybe we don't just blindly um, follow through with their map, but take into consideration some of the recommendations that they've made with that map and how can we blend it with other maps that we've created to try to meet the needs of those community members who may not be able to engage in the same way. Um, the other piece of feedback that I wanted to give was in regards to um, the information that's being provided. You know, I looked around on the city's website for quite some time to try to engage with these maps. And it took me a really long time to figure out they were on the agenda and not posted on the city's website. Um, also, some of the maps are very low resolution, so it's really difficult to see exactly where boundaries are um, and what schools are included, what neighborhoods are included. You don't have that nice map that we saw today with the presentation that has all the neighborhood boundaries there, and that would be really helpful. Back to the chair. Thank you, and th thank you to um, each of the individuals who made time this evening to, um, to, to give public comment. This, uh, the public comment aspect is, is very important to the commission, so we appreciate your time. Um, having heard the public comment, I would like to open the floor again for additional um, discussion by the commission and additional recommendations um, uh, the commission might have um, for Chris for any uh, additional changes or um, proposals uh, for changes for next week. Um, Commissioner Alvarez, I see your hand. Oh, you're, you, um, Tony, I see your hand raised. Yeah, I just wanted to note that I wanted to share my screen real quick um, to show that we do have um, redistricting draft maps. There's a link to the District R website directly to San Jose, so you can see the maps that have already been drawn. You can draw and submit your own maps as well using this link. Um, and then all of the, the draft plans that have been attached to our agenda today are being uploaded to website as well, as well as the letters from the public. So you don't have to go to an agenda to see these, these submitted drafts or to see the letters from the public. And again, you've got the link right here to go to District R and to draw and submit your own maps. Um, I just wanted people to be aware this was not um, fully updated a couple weeks ago. Um, Megan and I are now updating this daily as we get additional letters um, and additional draft plans. That's all. Thank you. And a question for Chris. Chris, is it possible when um, these draft plans get shared with city staff, is it also possible to upload a draft of that in Districter that we can play with? No, um, okay. that's not. Unfortunately, Districter really is like a public facing tool. Um, it wasn't designed to um, hold these draft plans. But one thing um, you can do is uh, going forward, all of these will have like a, an HTML link. Um, and let me just quickly share what, what I'm describing um, so that you can see, uh, so this is this map. Um, Sorry, I'm thinking I shared the wrong screen, sorry. Um, yes. Okay, can you see? Um, uh, we see an oh, HTML, HTML of okay. draft plan C2. Yeah, so you can, um, so basically you can zoom in and you can go all the way down to see um, street level and actual houses um, in these, HTMLs um, and the, each of the districts are um, color coded and numbered. So um, it's, a, it's a great way to see the boundary lines between districts um, and to, um, you know, tinker. Um, and with, with the maps, um, 
and that's really our our fix because Districtor isn't able to um, kind of ingest these just these plans that were the, the draft plans um, in a timely manner that we've created these HTML um, web maps of each of the of the lines so you can get to that clarity um, of zooming in to like the street view. Okay. Thank you. Um, and we did get uh, uh, some quite a bit of public comment on the unity map. Um, I would propose that since we are going to be um, having a presentation next week on the unity map that perhaps we defer substantive discussion on that um, portion for next week. Um, but any further discussions or recommendations for Chris tonight, please feel free commissioners to raise your hand. Um, Commissioner Fadum. Thank you. Um, one question first for Chris, it's one question, one comment. On, and I've been looking at the HTML maps um, and they're great, they're very useful. Is there a way to put the neighborhoods into the HTML maps? Um, we're working on making the HTML maps better, but at this point, um, it's it's a, just a, a street view, unfortunately. Okay. I'm just, I apologize for that. No, that's- it, That's what we can do at this point. Um, we're working yeah. on that solution though. Okay. Um, and the only other comment I would have is, um, I have to uh, take to heart the comment regarding splitting up San Jose State and the housing for the students. I do agree that is definitely a community of interest that really needs to be kept together um, somehow. And and I understand have I understand San Jose State does cover a little bit of ground, especially when we're talking about South Campus and then you've got the stadium. But if there's any possible way and then the surrounding uh, housing for the students, I think it would be very, very important. I just wanted to highlight um something in C3, and I think it's also done in the Unity map. Um, you can see that Negley um, University, the, I, I believe most of the um, San Jose State area is bounded in District 3 um, in um, the C3 map. And then if you look at the Unity map, sorry, I think I had them both on. And the Unity map does the same thing. Um, it includes most of the university and then it, it it doesn't use the um, 680 um, as the southern border. It goes into Virginia and Martha and Guadalupe, includes that, that in D3. So you can see a better construction, I think, of the university area in both the Unity map, D, uh, C4, um, and the um, C3 plan, which was um, our efforts to do the, um, the most minimal change from the current lines. Commissioner Dilveson. Yeah, thanks. Um, I know you want to defer comment on C4, but I feel like I need to say something because I don't want to have a presentation that wastes everybody's time. Because as currently constructed, I appreciate why certain things were done and certain aspects. I'm just going to speak about D6 because I, that's who I represent. But certain aspects of this make a complete non-starter. I mean, pushing D9 all the way at the Pine, taking Willow Glen High School out of D6 makes no sense. Keeping Kanoa Gardens in a peninsula that looks like the state of Florida makes no sense. Pushing all the way north and creating this weird island that horse causes a horseshoe on D3 makes no sense. It ignores the testimony we heard today from the public about people feeling like they're part of downtown. It ignores the written correspondence we received from the Willow Glen Neighborhood Association. So there's just no way based on what we've heard, at least from my constituents in my district, that I could ever support this. And not only would I not support it as currently constructed, I would strongly advocate against it. So I just feel like I respect the people who put the time in and why they've done what they've done. And I'm more than willing to listen to their presentation, but I wanna give them an opportunity to address very specific concerns so that we don't waste our time. Thank you. Commissioner Wright. Um, I uh, wanted to 
thank the public for making the comments that they have tonight because I also concur with keeping San Jose State whole, that community being part of downtown. Uh, in regards to the uni map, I will keep my comments brief. That is the C4 map in which I do appreciate how it keeps what is currently known as District 10 together geographically. Uh, but I do understand that there will be, as my fellow commissioner had mentioned, concerns about uh, some of the current lines as depicted. So I do look forward to next week's presentation about that particular map. And finally, again, I want to urge uh, more outreach to the community to know that this very important process is happening because it does impact the future of San Jose. Uh, in fact, I saw that the city was promoting the county's redistricting process, but not the city's. So that does concern me, especially with the magnitude of uh, what this redistricting process may result in. So those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Chris, just a few more comments from me. One, um, I would like to see, I think, two more lines on either draft plan C3 or C2, where we can keep downtown together as, as much as possible, uh, as close to what it is now, um, consistent with, um, the public comment that we've heard. And I wonder if, if like, in my mind, the way I'm thinking about it, and I'm sure you have a better way of thinking about it, but in my mind, it seems that 101 might be the place where we draw the easternmost line of District 3. And what I realize is gonna happen is that that's probably going to impact uh, District 5. District 5 will have to move up a little bit and based on population that part of district four might need to come into that new district five. Um, and so this is the current construction of D district three and um, okay. in C3. So you can see um, again, the, the dark, the black line here is the current lines. So um, what this does in D3, um, is it uses the, the freeway as the southern border. Um, it tracks Coleman's, it includes airport, the airport area, Rosemary. Um, and then it does expand itself um, from the current lines um, to unite North Valley. And it does a split of Brokaw. Um, it also um, comes down and tracks and keeps commercial whole. And then it has this finger um, out, with, including Las Palmas, um, checkers and independence, um, basically, I think to, to keep population, the only thing it loses is, um, from its current construction is, um, portion of little Portugal, which I unify, which we unified and put into D5. Okay. I guess in my mind, what I'm trying to think about are, um, possibilities for, bringing some of district four down from the east side into five or three in a different configuration than are in the current draft plans so you you'd like dd4 to come farther south basically is that right right and so um one of the i think the issues with this with this with this plan and one, what I, what we sought to do is, um, we did end up splitting, uh, penitentiary, penitentiary Creek and the line, um, is a little bit farther North in district four. So would you want to come South and with district four, like a long kind of this line? Is that I, the idea? I, I guess my, what I was thinking about was bringing the district five line up north a little bit more to be able to um, bring down some bring down district three and keep district three a little bit more uh, compact and together yeah i think right now district three as it's in this plan as it's being um, shown 
is um, already DV is already under deviation by 1.3% or 1360 people. Um, so if three got, if three gets smaller, or if three loses kind of this area and this area and D5 comes up, it's going to need to gain population. Um, and the only, I mean, I guess it could go north. Um, I don't think that you want, I don't, but there is not a lot of population here. You have to go uh, much farther north to do that. If you want to bring it south, it would like maybe go into the Alameda or in the alternative, um, it would break the highway border and like the unity map move south and include like Guadalupe and Virginia um, in, the, in the southern portion of the map. Mm, okay, so it sounds like there, there are too many rip, ripple effects if you try to move some of the eastern portion of District 4 down to accommodate for the population growth in District 4. Yeah, I mean, I think what, what would have to happen if, if five moves up, right, then four would take part of, of three and then three would come down um, and take some of seven or, or, or six. Because you always have to, it's a zero sum game in a, in a lot of respects. You can play with the deviations. So we could make district three smaller um, and test that outer bound of the 10% total deviation. Like we could bring it in this construction. Um, I think we could bring it to like, maybe negative another um, 15, like uh, 4,000 people um, could be moved into a different district um, and you would be around 5% um, under population. That's something we could, we could um, look to. And uh, for the problem is right now, district four is overpopulated because we were really trying to um, keep evergreen and um, a lot of the neighborhoods um, intact. So we would have to move the population um, probably into District 5, which is also overpopulated. So right now, 4, 5, and 8, no, 4 and 5 are both overpopulated, and 3 is under. So what you're, we can, we can do a little bit um, of, of edits, but not um, holistic change in this construction. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I will. I will play around with the maps and try to articulate some some more. Um, I guess and, uh, and explicit boundary lines. And I'll look. I'll look to it as well. Into it as well, and see if there's a way um, of making three a little more compact, moving five north. Okay. Thank you, um, Commissioner Sidbury. I see your hand is raised. Yes, yeah, so I'd just like to make a comment. Um, First of all, it's fantastic that nothing is written in stone and we get a great opportunity to uh, digest a lot of the positive the, the, the feedback that we got from a lot of the citizens throughout the districts concerning uh, putting forth their concerns about how these maps should be uh, drawn up these districts. And uh, I would just like to invite uh, many of the individual citizens that uh, took time tonight to, to make these comments and uh, hopefully they can uh, spread the word uh, within their own communities about this process. And, uh, you know, the more ideas we have, uh, the better it will probably make these districts come into reality. So I want to just uh, put forth that thank you again for their participation tonight. A great number and I, I really appreciate hearing all those thoughts and ideas. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, Commissioner Collins. Yeah, um, I wanted to ask Chris in, in District 4, um, as I look at this, <clears throat> um, Penitentiary Creek Road at North White and Mayberry is actually in District 5 now. Is that correct? Yes. So you can see the 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 line this blue line is mm -hmm. Penitentiary Street Creek Road. Okay. Everything south of that is in District Five. Everything north of that is in District Four. I guess except no, it looks it looks like it is a dead end right here. So there there's this little nub here. Um, south. Well, no, Pen it's sorry. It, yeah. So Penitentiary is the the northern border of District Five and the southern of District Four. 
Okay, so south to um, North White Road and Mayberry and North Capitol, that would all be starting into the north end of District 5. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Chris, um, for, for your work and assistance. And we look forward to um, the next iteration of, of MAPS uh, for next week. We'll move on to the next item on our agenda, which is old business. Oh, there's none, so we can move on. Item seven, new business. Oh, we don't have any new business. Item eight, public comment, open forum. This is the time for public comment on items that are not on the agenda. The Brown Act prohibits the commission from discussing any item that is not agendized. Each speaker will be given two minutes. Can the clerk please um, call the speakers? Caller 5140. Yeah, I'd like to, to uh, can you hear me? Yes. Great, great, okay. Yeah, I just wanna say that the city's misguided. It wastes time, it wastes money, and it does never, it never ever focuses on real issues, which, in, which include roads, uh, first responders, uh, overnight shifts for uh, crime prevention, does an okay job with the libraries. The librarians are terrible, but you're able to at least get books from the library. But yeah, the city's just run really, really bad. And I don't, I, I don't. Enough people don't complain about it. Everyone's very, very complacent, too nice, too polite. And I'm not. I really think that what these road diets that are going on in District Nine, with Pam Foley's district, are really stupid. You're going to make Hillsdale uh, two lanes on each side creating more and more traffic. The city thinks that they're going to get, you know, get rid of uh, carbon emissions because of getting rid of uh, parking here in the downtown. Totally stupid. They, they have this environmental bent. when it, It's a city. The city needs to focus on local issues. It's not about carbon credits and, and cars and everything else. They need to make it so it's easy to drive, easy to park. I don't get it. They, it's like a student union with trying to find some sort of utopia, some kind of fantasy utopia. It, it's, not, it, it's not a city council. The student union uh, meets the real estate, mar the a real estate office with a fantasy utopia of unicorns running down the street in a carbon-free uh, area. It's the whole thing. This whole city and this, the police department is terrible. You can never get a hold of anybody there. No Julie Engelbrecht. Um, yes, I'm hoping this isn't out of line. I was just trying to ask a question. Those of us with hearing loss, um, I'm able to follow in the closed captionings fairly well, but if a transcript can be made available of meetings that you can download, many webinar formats don't allow that. Uh, Zoom's one of them. Um, that would be very useful for people like me. But I also missed how to access the HTML maps that seemed exceedingly useful. And I thought others along with myself might want to know how to access those if that can be addressed at this post time. I don't know. Thank you. Yeah. Um, hi, this is Tony Tabor, City Clerk. Um, after the, the meeting is over, um, those of you who want a little tutorial on the website, you hang on and I'll go over those things with you guys. Okay, thank you. It just, it's because I still can't hear. And so I, I need to be able to see your lips moving so I can read your lips. I'll go on camera. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm done. Okay. Cher? Hi there. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering, I mentioned this before and I emailed about it and I don't know, I haven't got an answer yet. On the new maps, the three maps, the C2 and the C3, if I go on either link to them, they're identical maps. And then there's the C4. I cannot find the C3. It doesn't seem to be posted anywhere. And I'm wondering if anybody else has the same problem. I've tried it several times on the regular web page and on the agenda web page. The HTML and the PDF for the C2s and the C3s 
They're identical. I don't think the C3 is up there. Maybe somebody else sees them, but I don't. So I'm hoping somebody could help sort that out. And the other thing is I'm trying to figure out for next week, it looks like somehow the Unity map is, is like the golden child all of a sudden. And it's going to be, you know, presented at next week's meeting. I don't know if it's going to take over the whole meeting or what. But is there any opportunity to get any other maps of interest that people might want to have discussed at the next meeting? Thank you. Um, although this isn't a question and answer period, I'm going to go ahead and answer that. Anybody who has submitted a draft map has the opportunity to present it um, to the commission. Um, we'll do it during public comment. So if you submit a map in the next week and you would like to talk about your map, um, you can do that. And we can even get you um, the ability to share your screen to point out the map that you're looking at. Um, next speaker is Blair Beekman, followed by Gina Gates. Hi, Blair Beekman. Uh, thank you for the meeting today. Um, I wanted to quickly offer that I offered uh, some public comment at a uh, neighborhood services and education uh, committee meeting today. Uh, I made important words at the final open forum that were important to myself to speak about. And I kind of bobbled and muffed a few of my final words. And I just wanted to clarify that I used the words as I think we are learning. Um, so if you hear, if you listen to it, uh, and it sounds a little bit muffled, hopefully you won't hear it, but if it does sound a, little, a bit muffled, I meant to say, as I think we are learning, and uh, thanks, that's all I'll say about that for now. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for uh, this meeting tonight. Uh, the person who spoke uh, about District 5 issues and the Ocala area, and, and wanting to be more a part of District 5 as opposed to District 7, I think that's a real old issue that I hope you can look into. Um, I have the I have the same feelings and I've just had that same feeling uh, as her for a long time. And so uh, thank you if you could look into that. When I talked about uh, the issues of living by Santa Clara, you know, it seems like, um, you know, living on the Alameda along the District 6, uh, it's always been a nagging question. Shouldn't that, couldn't that be District 1 area to, to consider? And my ideas about splitting up the districts a bit more uh, that's going on at the charter process at this time, maybe it can be, uh, I don't know, if we're not going to do that now, we can just consider it in, in how you're making decisions at this time, and maybe it can help. I really like the east-west idea of, of, of uh, item C3, where, where putting D D3 into the east side, bringing D5 into the west side and downtown area. I hope we can do more east-west things in the future, and that needs a lot more consideration about the ideas of future equity and, and good things like that. Gina Gates-Lopez, followed by Gabby. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you, everybody, because things don't get done in this city without us stepping forward and doing the work. Um, and that this is uh, directed to the first person um, who really had a lot of complaints about uh, this city that I love and I think a lot of you love too because you wouldn't be here and serving. If you don't like it so much, then get them. You know, um, it doesn't sound like you contribute in any way with any commission, with any council or invest your time into making the difference that you feel needs to happen. Uh, I encourage you to please uh, step forward because, you know, we old dogs, we get tired. You know, we want some other people, some new blood. So I encourage you, get in, but, you know, stop your complaining, seriously. Um, I'd like to also share that, um, or ask, are you doing any outreach where this these same presentations are available um, concurrently in Spanish and Vietnamese? Uh, because, you know, the big populations um, and they are, um, you know, uh, ESL, uh, learners or, or um, English is not their primary language. So that's important. That's my question. Second thing I want to say is our community, which we we live in the old, um, geez, the old, uh, where the little cheese factory used to be along the 101. Uh, so our group, we started a group called Parking Stink. And I think that that resonates in a lot of places. Uh, I don't know where this belongs, but as far as development goes, um, we really need to be very, very careful because over in our neck of the woods, we have multi-generational homes and um, these people work and they need to be able to park their cars. So please make sure 
parking is required for new development. Thank you. Gabby? Hi, um, I, I, I wasn't planning to speak, but then someone had actually mentioned about how they also felt like Ocala would be best, you know, represented in District 5, because I've always felt like um, a distingu distinguishing landmark is Cunningham Lake, and Cunningham Lake really does divide the neighborhoods. Like in my neighborhood, when I walk out the door, I see the Hillview Airport. Their neighborhood, they, they, neighborhood, they see um, Mercedes Benz dealership. So um, I, I want to just thank the person. Um, I kind of, I really feel like um, they validated, um, you know, what I said. And I, I just want to say thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you. Back to the chair. Thank you for, for those um, comments. Uh, moving on to item nine, meeting schedule. The next um, meeting uh, we have is next Thursday, October 21st at 7 o'clock p.m. And again, our priority will be to um, discuss um, iterations of the uh, draft maps and also hear from um, the folks at um, Rising about the Unity map. Again, we'll be meeting weekly uh, for the next several weeks until this process is completed. Uh, next item nine, adjournment. Okay, and the meeting of the redistricting commission is now adjourned. Good night, everybody. Good night.